Motherfuckers! Ah! Alright, so this is the exciting hangover of fucking emotional hype and whatever the fuck is, got, is going on from the fucking news of yesterday. Uh, ah! Alright. Listen, alright. I, I, I don't spend an awful lot of time actually giving Derp a shout out in these things, and I probably should because the guy's <laughs> he's awesome. You're awesome, dude. I'm just saying that up front. Uh, your work, your fine works predicting pretty much everything that was going to happen in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with the Inhumans and all of that stuff, the, ter the Terrigan Crystals and all of that stuff was like fucking spooky spot on. You and Ghost helmed that discussion. I'm pretty sure uh, Winfield was involved in those discussions as well. But, <clears throat> dude, th those conversations fucking put chills down my side. And uh, like I said, that was like some soothsayer shit. You guys are like predicting the future, and he did the same thing with Agent Carter regarding the whole fucking Black Widow program. I thought you was involved in that as well. Uh, you know, if I'm leaving people out, I'm not meaning to discredit people, but Durf and Ghost have spearheaded the fucking predictions and, uh, you know, being all whatever. Something's going on with the head. Um, being able to predict the future and whatnot. All I'm saying is that shit, I love reading that stuff. I'm not really good at, like, taking those little pieces and saying, ah, this is what's going to happen, but you guys are fucking brilliant, which is why, this is why I'm very disappointed, bitch. Don't, don't mess with this whole Spidey thing. Everybody, this is my parade. No, <laughs> listen, actually, for real, though, mess with it. You should, actually, because we really should manage our expectations. It does kind of seem like we're all running into what could potentially be a wall, but, you know, I think we're going to be all right. I have, I have faith in Marvel Studios, and I really think that they're, they're the ones that went into the negotiating table. Like, you know what, this is what we want to do, and Sony was pretty much like, well, what if we don't, and they just kind of looked at him like, I'm not saying that, okay, that's all right here. <laughs> I, I think that they, they had the power. I think that some, uh, you know, Marvel had the power because they don't need Spider-Man. They didn't need him, <clears throat> but Sony needs help. So, you know, of course they're gonna, whatever. You know, I don't know what to say about that. What else to say about that? But you know what? Keep on keeping on. You, you, I mean, every we should manage our expectations because of but the today it's a, maybe yesterday and today might not be the best day to manage expectations because. We're filled with elation. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it is what it is, dude. I actually believe it or not. This is I don't know if this is sad. It could be sad. Could be sad. Probably is sad. But last night I actually slept better <laughs> because I knew we had our hands on Spider-Man. I'm just happy to have him back in the universe. I like I like the idea that we can see him with other characters. Let's put it this way: if Sony decides to make a clusterfuck of whatever the fuck they're doing. Uh, we can at least see a, a, an adaption on our end when he gets to come over to our side of, you know, of things. I know it's not the most ideal of situations or circumstances, but uh, it's better than what we had, guys, isn't it? Before we had nothing, you know, before we had absolutely nothing, no say whatsoever. Sony could do whatever the fuck they wanted with Spider-Man, and they did. And they did some horrible things with the Green Goblin and all this. Uh, they, can we put this to rest finally? Yeah, the, the fact that they're they're going off of Garfield and going into another direction gives me some hope. But you know, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, oh, then don't worry, Fudgy. I'll be able to regurgitate anything that I'm fucking saying right now on Sunday. Uh, 
ad nauseum, but I could not make a fucking, uh, uh, another drunk video because of the, the Spider-Man news was just way too exciting. And also, I got a, I got a new mug, you know, I had to, I had to show off my Thor mug. It was the first thing I thought of. I saw it in the mail. I was like, well, I got to get some beer to put in that. It's the Thor mug. How could I not get ale to fill it with? <laughs> Anyhow, um, like I said, I went to see fucking science fiction, and I feel I need to explain myself. Me and my stepfather. Uh, uh, it was me and my stepfather growing up. And uh, we grew up with my mom and... Uh, my three older sisters, and get to a certain age where I'm about 11 or 12, and the rest of my sisters are past puberty, and all living with each other, and their fucking periods would sync up. I know, it's fucking gross, right? But this would be, I, I, I learned this after the fact, <laughs> this would be when my stepfather would be like, we're going to the movies. <laughs> And it didn't fucking matter what was playing, but it was almost always some kind of stupid science fiction movie. He would drag me to anything, which didn't matter. He was like, what are we doing? I was like, well, what are we seeing here? I don't know. Whatever. We'll figure it out when we get there. <laughs> and he would just pretty much just look at it and be like, okay, which one's science fiction? Okay, we're going to see that one. <laughs> so that's kind of like where my habit comes in. Whenever a science fiction movie comes out, I'm always very, it's, it's very hard for me not to go see it. So that's where I was with this one. I wasn't disappointed with the special effects. I think that guy... That does those, uh, uh, is it Zuckerman? Not Zuckerman, Zucker I can't remember. But the guy that just said, somebody, I think Uni just posted it. Oh, no, Josh posted it and said I think he was being generous. Um, that guy kind of summed the fucking thing up. He really did sum the movie up nicely. It was like, this is a great effects movie that was placed inside a shit story. <laughs> you know, actually, there were parts of the story that were good. There were parts of the story that were even intriguing. Uh... And then there were the parts of the story that were completely like, oh my god, they've done this about a million fucking times. The whole thing kind of screamed like, uh, uh, what was that? The last fight, the last Starfighter. I don't know why, but whenever I saw the the trailers for this movie, I kept on thinking about the last Starfighter. The only thing that was missing was the video game. You know, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. The last Starfighter was a better movie too, like you know, but uh. But I am a huge fan of the uh, the, uh, the genre, and uh, it, it was like I was saying with uh, I think I said it on the podcast on uh, Sunday night. It was like the whole Channing Tatum thing. It's like <laughs> there's just absolutely nothing you can do about that guy. <laughs> he is he is like a a tree of shitty acting. <laughs> he's he's immovable. <laughs> it's just gonna be there. Like no matter what's going on in the film, there's Channing Tatum. That immovable shit actor. He can't hide him. <laughs> Unless he's off the screen, you cannot hide him. There he is. <laughs> Wherever you go, there's Channing Tatum. It is what it is. And I don't know, guys. Uh, it's 8 minutes and 25 seconds. All right. You know what? I'm going to stop. <clears throat> Darf, fucking love you. Uh, Ghost, fucking love you. Uh, uh, shout outs to fucking Jeremy Winfield. The fucking music, of course, is always for you, old man winners. Uh, Jeff Lee, love you, brother. Joe Tremark, love you, brother. Uh, that's all I got for you, fuckers. Peace.